Hey guys, how's it going? So in today's video, I'm gonna be walking through a subject that a lot of you guys have reached out to me on. So there was a lot of interest in some of the web scraping tutorials that I did, particularly on books2scrape.com, which is our sandbox uh, that we use for web scraping. And one of the things people asked me was, okay, well, if I wanted to have the script running in the background, I can do one of two things. I can have it run on my computer or I can have it run on a Raspberry Pi. But then the second thing is, how do I get this running on the cloud so I don't have to rely on any kind of computing at home? So today, what I'm going to walk you through is I'm going to walk you through how we're going to go ahead and scrape as many as pages and as many as entries as we want off of this website. And we're going to do it completely 100% in the cloud. So we're going to build the code. We're going to deploy it onto Heroku. We're going to run it in Heroku. We're going to set our own custom schedule and it's going to email us the Excel or CSV file with all the information that we want to scrape. So let's get started. So this is a sample input on, on one of the scripts that I actually created. And I mean, when you think about the applicability of this, this is great for machine learning projects as well. There are so many APIs out there. And in a future video, what I'm going to do is show you how you take information from an API and dump it into a database so you can later use that for machine learning projects. But for today, I'm just going to show you how you can go ahead and email this to yourself. And then later we'll talk about in another video how we're going to put this in a database and like I said, do some kind of machine learning against it. So let's quickly walk through the code. I'm not gonna go through the entire code. I'll go through some of the blocks. I actually put this on GitHub. And when I did put it on GitHub, I was very meticulous this time to actually put in all the instructions on the different files you're gonna need, as well as instructions on how to run it, what to edit, and then what you're gonna actually put in Heroku in, or in your command line in this case, to get this up and running on Heroku. So I'm gonna quickly whiz through this, but all the instructions are there and I will be linking this in the description below. So you're gonna need a couple of different files in this case. So let me just make this. All right, so first and foremost, you're gonna need two different Python files. So the way that my directory is actually set up is I've got these files called API key, proc file, requirements.txt, and scraper.py. And those are the ones that you're gonna really need. Don't worry about the readme one right now. That's just something I downloaded from my own GitHub page. But essentially what this is, is I'm gonna be using a couple of different modules here that I haven't used before. One of them is going to be something called SendGrid and SendGrid allows you to use an API to go ahead and send an email out. So that's one of the APIs that you're going to need. So in order to do that, you're going to go to SendGrid.com. This is going to allow you to go ahead and send some emails uh, using an API and their free service is pretty generous. So if you just quickly, uh, if we just quickly go through this, you can send about 40,000 emails for 30 days and then 100 emails per day forever after that. So for my purpose, this is going to serve just fine. You're going to go ahead, you're going to sign in or create an account if you don't have one. All right, so once you go in, what you're going to do is you're going to go to email API on the side. You're going to go to integration guide. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and choose the web API. And then you're going to pick whatever language. In this case, I'm doing Python. And then you are going to go ahead and give it a name and it'll generate a key. And that is what you're going to copy and paste into this file here, which is called API key. And an API key, what you're gonna do is you will put your API key right here. And then here, this is the email that you wanna send it to and the email that you're sending it from. Be aware that you can't do any kind of spoofing with this because it does have some checks built in. So be sure to use something like Gmail because Gmail seems to work just fine. So in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send it to a burner email just so you guys have the ability to see that. Um, so I will go ahead and change that. And as I upload it to Heroku, you'll see all of that stuff coming to life. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to, uh, I'm getting a burner email here. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. And I will put this in my to field over here. I'm gonna go ahead and populate the rest of this. And then we'll go back to the original script and I'll show you how it works. All right, so let's go ahead and walk through this very quickly. So I've already previously done a web scraping video on this particular website using this particular script itself, which I'm gonna be linking up above and below. So I'll go through it very quickly, but what it's doing is it's gonna go ahead and scrape around 10 pages or so, and it's gonna get a couple of different fields. It's gonna get the title, the price, the stars, and the URL of the actual book itself. So the actual site we're gonna be scraping is this one right here. So let me just go to it here. It's called books to scrape.com. So we'll be getting the title, the price, whether it's in stock or not, and how many stars it is out of five. And so that's what this entire script here basically does all the way up to around this point over here. So all of this is going to go ahead and scrape that for us. It's gonna scrape 10 pages, there's about 20 items per page. So that's about 200 items or so it's gonna scrape. 
Then we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the get the absolute path of it, and we're gonna throw it in a directory called CSV files. Um, and then once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and open it. We're gonna encode the file. We're gonna use the API to go ahead and send the message. This is gonna be the subject. Your file is ready, and attaches your scraped file. And then we will go ahead and parse the attachment and send it off with this when that web scraping is done. So one thing to keep in mind is when you run it locally, it's going to run based on your computer time. But when you put it on Heroku, it's going to work on UTC time. So make sure you do that conversion as well. And I've left all of these options in here. You can uncomment whatever uh, suits your needs. When you're going to scrape something like Amazon or Walmart or any other basically big retailer, online retailer, there's this is essentially how you're going to do it. So while I don't condone you guys going and scraping the heck out of everything on their website, this is basically how you set up something that will automatically go on Amazon, scrape whatever you want, and send you a file. It could be a JSON, it could be an email, it could be a CSV in this case, whatever you want. And it can send it to every five minutes, every five hours, every day, whatever you want. Uh, but again, just keeping in mind that when you're going to be doing something like frequent uh, requests to a different server, you may want to look at your uh, request headers that you're going to be sending because you want to make sure that you're masking yourself, uh, your IP, you know, your, your browser and all that stuff. So that's not covered in this one, but this is just basically showing you how you can go ahead and do this. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and upload this to Heroku and get it running. Now, if you don't have a Heroku account, be sure to go to heroku.com and go ahead and sign up for a free account. Um, you are given specific resources on the free tier, so you can go ahead and check that on their website, but it's free to join. The other thing I'm going to tell you is that when you're creating something like this and you're going to be using a scheduler, Heroku actually wants you to use one of their add-ons. And if I were to type in scheduler here, one of the things you'll see is if I type in Heroku scheduler, and I want to say provision, although it says it's free, it's going to ask me for a credit card. So the method I'm actually going to show you is it does the scheduling and you don't need to use a credit card at all, which is a bonus. Though now moving forward, we're going to do everything in the command line. So let me get you started on how we're going to do that. And again, I have those detailed instructions on my GitHub page where you can go ahead and check that out as well. But let's just bring up that page over here. And these are all the instructions you're going to need. So we're going to follow this verbatim and we're going to see if we can get this deployed. And remember, this is the email address I'm using. It's just temporary burner email address that I've put in my to and from field. If you don't already have Heroku uh, CLI set up, you can just go to the installation website when you get into your Heroku account and it'll tell you how to do it. But if you wanna see that you have it installed or not, you type in Heroku, you get all this stuff so you know that it's installed. So let's follow these instructions. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and do Heroku login. And what it's going to do now, it's going to say, press any key to launch a browser. It's going to go ahead and open a browser for me. And in the browser, it's basically going to say, okay, you got to log in. So I'll log in here. I am already logged in, so I don't need to re worry about re-logging in. But if you weren't logged in for the first time, it's going to go ahead and say, uh, log in. And then once that's done, it's going to say logged in as my account name right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my local drive on my actual machine. So I'm going to go... So for that, I'm just going to type in CD, then I'm going to drag the path over where it's stored, just like that. And these are the files I have in here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type in git init. That basically says we're going to initialize a new git repository. So that's been done. Now I'm going to go ahead and call this thing my app. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And it's going to say ID not found because we actually haven't created that app. So I wanted to just show you that. And so you're going to go over here into your Heroku, you're going to go to personal here. So we'll just call this my scraping app. There we go. So we got something. I will go ahead and create this. They actually have all the instructions that you need to do over here as well, but I've also got them on my GitHub page. So let's go back from here. And now we will use the actual proper app name, which is this. So it's now initialized it, which is great. And now I'm going to do git add and what i'm saying here is i want to add everything in my folder then i'm going to commit to a version we'll type in git commit and then we'll just give this you can you can call this whatever you want i'll just say v1 for version one though i did realize i just forgot one thing and that is i need to go ahead and make sure that when i schedule this because i've scheduled this for 907 which was about 10 minutes ago or so I'm actually going to have this schedule every minute so that you guys see this coming through. So I will go ahead and change this and add this one in. 
And now basically it's gonna run this job every minute. And I'll show you how we're gonna start it and stop it. So not a big deal. I just gotta go back here and type in, just add it all over again. Then we'll commit it again. And it's gonna say one file has changed. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. And then finally, we will go ahead and push this. And so now it's gonna compile everything. It's gonna know that because I have my requirements.txt in there, it should say it here somewhere. I don't know where it says it, but it recognizes that because there's a requirements.txt, this is a Python app, and that's why it says Python app detected. And then it's gonna install all dependencies that I've actually got outlined in my requirements.txt. The requirements.txt is also gonna be sent or loaded on GitHub, so make sure you use that. I've often had people emailing me saying, hey, listen, I've used the code, but it's not working for whatever reason. I point them to the requirements.txt, and a few minutes later, I generally get some kind of a thank you response. So very important that you follow the requirements.txt because it is making sure that it's using the right modules that is gonna make this specific thing work. Now you can also run this in a virtual environment on Heroku if you want. I've chosen not to do so for demonstration purposes. Maybe we'll do that another time, in which case you can run multiple different applications that have different dependencies. But for the purpose of this, I've only got the one application running. I'm using the free tier, so I don't have that many resources anyway, so it's okay for now. So now it's basically saying this is done. Now this next step is not explicitly stated or listed on the actual Heroku instructions. This is why I put it on GitHub. And that is now you have to go ahead and set a dyno for it. And what that means is I need to go and tell Heroku, hey, allocate a resource to make this thing work. So right now I'm not gonna get any emails to my temp email address here. But as soon as I do this, we, we're gonna wait about a minute because it's gonna go ahead and scale up. It's gonna assign one worker to it. And um, I'm gonna walk you through what worker is in a second. So when I go back to my files, I'm gonna go ahead and use something called a proc file. And what the proc file is going to do is it's gonna go ahead and tell Heroku that I wanna assign one worker and I wanna open Python scraper.py, which is what this file is called. And so the other thing to do is now, if I wanna see if this is actually working, I can go ahead and open up my logs. So I can go ahead and type in Heroku logs, and this will tell you if there's any issues or not. So let's go back here. Haven't gotten an email yet, so let's hope it's going to run fine. It's actually going to, so now that it's executed, it, it actually ran the script in the background. So you notice that there's something here now that says your file is ready, which is pretty much what we had to find here in the subjects. Your file is ready, attachment is your scrape file, or attaches your scrape file. So when I click on this, attaches your scrape file, I go to attachments, it's called scraped.csv, which is what I did call it over here as well. And when I open this, Let's see what we get. So we should get a total of roughly 200 rows or so. 200 rows exactly actually, and that's exactly what we get. And so now this is gonna continually run. I'm actually gonna let this run one more time so you guys can see. Um, let's go back to the list here and you'll see another email pop up after about a minute. So this was the first one. So we'll leave this here. We're gonna let it run for another 60 seconds or so. Hopefully we see a second one. And if we do, we know that this script is running. Then I'm gonna show you how you're gonna shut this down so you're not killing your resources all the time. So let's close this down. We're gonna give this about another minute or so. And there you go. So there's the second one that actually popped up. So this is gonna continually run every single minute. And again, like I said, you can have a scrape file that you're running off of Amazon or you know some other kind of a large retailer. But anyways, for now, that is how this script works. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is how you're gonna shut this down so that you're not continually running this and killing your resources. You're gonna go back to your command line and all you're gonna do is you're gonna close this down. Even if I close this down, it's still gonna run in the background. I've just closed the log file for now. But all I have to do is I gotta scale the worker down to zero again. That means assign nobody to it. I scale it down and after this, I shouldn't be getting any more emails at all. So that was probably the last one that trickled through, but I will not get any more after this uh, because I basically said I'm assigning no more workers to it. And that is basically it. So that is how you would run something like this. Very straightforward to run it on Heroku. I gave you all the files that you need on GitHub. So make sure you go and check it out. Build something, send me an email, show me. I'd love to showcase it. But this is the kind of cool stuff you can do. And this is, like I said, for free because we're not putting any credit cards towards Heroku. We ran our own custom scaler or custom scheduler. 
and you can go ahead and schedule however you want whenever you want which is the awesome part of this i'm just going to leave this open for another minute or two to show you that there are, in fact are not going to be any more files coming through but guys if you did like this please consider liking and subscribing make sure you go to www.sadcycle.com to go ahead and sign up for my newsletter i don't put everything up on github nor do i put everything up on youtube i do have other sources where i put it up on and i will send you an email with that information if that is something you're interested in as well so again hopefully you like this video if you did please consider liking and subscribing take care have a great day and happy new year mm -hmm.